On the situation along the coast, let's turn now to MSNBC science and environment expert Jeff Corwin, who's at Pensacola Beach for us this evening. Good evening, Jeff. How you doing, Keith? The storm surge, what, what is it expected to actually do? What are the material results? Keith, if you look behind me, you can actually see these uh, waves have come alive as a result of uh, Hurricane Alex. And of course, I'm standing here on Pensacola Beach. This beach is famous for its ivory sand, but not today. Uh, as these waves lap up into the shore, it brings up this incredibly toxic stuff. Can you see that, Keith? Yep. This is the crew that is washing with the lap of every additional wave onto this beach. And it, it stretches as far as my eyes can see and throughout this entire coastline. And as this storm gets more fierce, it brings more of this crude. And it's incredible to me, Keith, to think that this oil originated nearly 100 miles away from here, but it's tenacious stuff and it sticks to everything, to the sand, to the habitat, to the wildlife. To that point, Jeff, is there any precedent for predicting the actual environmental impact of a Category 2 storm mixing with that volume of oil that's on the surface, on the, on the Gulf, and in the water that's, that's forced now uh, behind you, and when all that stuff is forced into fragile ecosystems like marshes and such? Uh, Keith, this is clearly uh, the most most uh, devastating, unprecedented environmental catastrophe our country has ever experienced. I think people uh, don't truly recognize the importance of these Gulf waters. 70% uh, of our seafood, specifically our shellfish, our oysters, our shrimp, they grow in these waters. The, the marshes and the estuaries you just referred to, these are the nurseries for life. This is the place where little baby fish grow up and get their gumption so they can come up there and go out there and become big fish. This whole ecosystem not only supports wildlife, but it supports the livelihood culturally and for generations for thousands and thousands of people. And this whole region is in jeopardy. There are over 400 different species that are in the line of fire of this toxic crude. You know, I'm sitting here, Keith, and I'm mm -hmm. holding this stuff. And, you know, I feel like I should be in like uh, Central Park with my dog. And I keep yep. reminding myself that this is the other version of that stuff. Uh, and it is incredibly toxic. When it begins out there in the waters, it contains up to a hundred different hydrogen hydrocarbons from benzene to chromium, metals like mercury, all this stuff is very, very toxic, not only at the surface of the water, but throughout the entire water column. I think we are, uh, we are in store for a truly, uh, a, a truly devastating impact on our natural resources. Let me explain one thing the viewers saw, Jeff, that you would not have uh, in our shot that we took from South Padre. What you saw there, that uh, sort of amorphous figure in the, in the wind and the rain in, in Texas, is in fact our friend Jim Cantori from the Weather Channel. That's how bad that is. Now you see it, just how bad it is down there. But back to, uh, uh, back to what we're looking at where Jeff is. Uh, this is the second time in two days I've heard this. This might help. The storm might help because it would help the oil evaporate if it breaks it up. Does oil evaporate? And if it evaporates, is it necessarily a good thing that it evaporates? Interesting question, Keith. Uh, when the evaporating process happens, it's usually at what they call the source, at the place where the oil is bubbling up. It begins at 5,000 feet at the uh, bottom of the ocean. It makes its way to the surface, and very quickly, uh, chemicals like benzene burn off. But this stuff, it doesn't evaporate. In fact, as it's, as, it's, as, it's, as it's exposed to the sea, to the heat, to the salt water, it becomes pretty noxious stuff. It becomes what we call uh, emulsified, and it, and it will stick to anything. For example, the bird stories that we've been featuring, uh, for example, the Louisiana brown pelican, this is the state bird, okay? This is a bird that became nearly extinct in 1963. They recovered this bird, but now it's facing another threat. Again, one of many, many different species that are uh, being attacked by this oil. And, and, and frankly, I'm not seeing it evaporate because mm -hmm. of this hurricane. If anything, Keith, the hurricane makes cleaning up this mess even more of a challenge because when you have seas that are pushing from five feet to 12 feet, there's no way you can have the boats out there skimming. You can't have the first responders out there rescuing wildlife. This whole place, right now is in the eye of this storm. MSNBC science and environment expert Jeff Corwin in Pensacola Beach, Florida for us. Thank you, Jeff. Thanks, Keith.